Good morning, everyone. And welcome to this live streaming here from the sanctuary of Black Chinese Church. We're glad you've been able to log on, and others will be logging on as we're going. And I welcome you to this very special day in the, uh, in the life of the church, bringing the church to you uh, during this uh, time of, uh, of a, a kind of semi-shutdown, which it is. Uh, there's no one here in the sanctuary except uh, except the team, the uh, Facebook and, and YouTube team. So if, if, if you hear an amen or a shout or a hand clap, it's because they like something they heard being preached. Amen. So it's, the church is not here. They're, they're also viewing with our friends uh, from near and far. We have people as far down as San Diego. <coughs> Excuse me. And, uh, so, but this is a very special Sunday. Uh, last Sunday, of course, was a blessing as First Lady brought the Easter message. I know that blessed those that were able to uh, uh, able to log on last week. Today is a new day. Today is Divine Healing Sunday, a Sunday once a month that we focus on Jesus, the Divine Healer, and the Bible calls him the Great Physician, ah, the Great Doctor, the. Uh, uh, the one who heals, uh, broken hearts, who he heals all manner of sickness. Amen. And he's open on Sundays, by the way. Amen. And he makes house calls. Out of his old school, Jesus is coming to you and has come to me. And he comes to all those that are hurting and heals that which may be physically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, financially. <clears throat> Wherever people are hurting, the great physician is coming today on this special Sunday. And I believe that as, uh, as Pastor Dave is going to be coming in just a moment, uh, our, our visitation pastor to preach and to, uh, and to share with you as he does month after month on Divine Healing Sunday. And God confirms the word as he's preaching and teaching. We've had many healings. He's had many people heal. And we believe today will be no different. That God will heal whatever hurt or pain or whatever concern apprehension, whatever fear, whatever you may need God to touch in your life. We believe today is a special day in your life and the life of your family. Amen. God is a good God. Hallelujah. And He is, again, let me say, He is the healer. And uh, you will experience some matter of healing today as this, as this live stream goes forth. Amen. Let's have a word for prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you for the, for the healer. I thank you for the great Physician. I thank you that he's in the house today and that you're coming to each and every house, each and every person today. I thank you for signs and wonders and miracles as this live stream goes forth. I thank you that you'll be healing people far and near. Lord. I thank you for those that have already been healed. We thank you, Father, for those that you've already touched. But there's some that may need, uh, may need a special touch today. Father, manifest your glory, your power. We'll give you all the praise and all the glory. And we pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want you to welcome our, our pastor, Pastor Dave Rutledge. Amen. We call him Cowboy. Amen. God bless you, Cowboy. Take your liberty. I know God's going to do great things today. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'd like to, to welcome you all today. Yes. I'd like to welcome you all in for it inviting us into your homes, yes. your living room, or if you're in your car, driving down the road, yeah. listening to this, we'd like to invite you in, and it's the fellow, we, I know we miss the fellowship, and it's, yeah. and it's, and it's tough on us. Yeah. But thank God for what God has provided for us that we can reach out and speak yes. to others. And the in the world, word is not confined to these walls. You know, Jesus spoke to the, the Roman centurion, said, Jesus said, Speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. This word is boundless. It gets, there's nothing holding this word back except us. Oh. You know, I, I don't know if y'all are familiar with uh, Charles Cap, but he said the Bible says that you'll have what you say. But a big problem we have is we keep saying what we have. Are you with me? 
Pastor Matt, Pastor Ron uh, got his hand out right here. What's in a name? Doesn't. What are you calling something? You know, are you calling yourself broke? Are you calling yourself sick? No. I call myself healed. And I call myself rich. Hallelujah. You'll have what you say. Anyway, the Lord, the Lord told me to invoke the blessing on now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift His countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen and amen. I heard something the other day from uh, from Brett, Brett Baer. He's a, a Fox News anchor on uh, Special Report. Brett Bear said, we're done one day closer to putting this all behind us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One day closer to putting this all behind us. Hallelujah. But I got a little better news than that. We're one day closer to heaven. Can I get an amen? amen. <laughs> oh, no, people. And I did, uh, I, I heard an acronym the other day for COVID. C. Christ. O. Overcame. V. Viruses. I. Infectious. D. Diseases. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's a greater one that is living in us. Can I get an amen? Now we've been we've been going through the the power through the Passover season, but we as a body, I think we've been we've been missing it here and there. Not pastor, you know, we just we don't take advantage of our rights and our privileges. That we have. We, we've been given the name of Jesus. And we've been given the blood of Jesus. And God told us. To paint the blood. On the doorposts. And over the head. And I will cause. When I pass through. I'll not permit the destroyer. To come upon you. Amen? Amen. Well, I'm I'm looking the other day and I I get I look in the in Webster's dictionary, good old Noel. Webster, he is a man of God, and you can you can receive some good words from him. But a virus is an infectious agent causing serious disease. An agent is an active force producing an effect. That sounds to me like we're in a spiritual battle. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in the heavenlies. That's what this all happened in the heavenlies before it happened here. Amen. See, we need to start take, we start to not using that blood. We need to start using that name. We need to do that. We've been given this. We've been given the right, the correct privilege. He says here, take it, use it. Amen. Now I heard Pat Robertson say the other day, but it was on on the 700 Club. See, but these spirits need a host. Now we've been on this lockdown and things that we've been on and we got that darn TV turned on 
And we're listening to that media, and they're evangelists of fear and hate. See, that's what we're putting in us. That's what we get to feeding on that. And we're, we're the hosts of this party, but we get to open that door, listening to this fear and this hate and this doubt and this unbelief. Yeah, Are you hearing me? Woo. Yeah, we open that door. And Satan is more than eager to come in. Yeah, Pastor, you know, and they they talked so evil against our president the other day and stuff. And and I heard Brother Copeland just say the other day, I know we we've not been given the spirit of fear, but a power and a love and a sound mind. But I'm gonna tell you what, we ain't been given the spirit of hate either. We didn't get in the spirit of love in a sound mind. Hallelujah. My God. Come on, brother. Come on. Come on. Now, I'm going to tell you what. Fear is faith. Twisted. Evil. Twisted. We get to looking at those circumstances. We get to confess them what we're seeing instead of what the Word of God says. Am I talking to somebody here? Whew, hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God. Hebrews 2, 1 says, Take heed to what you hear lest you drift away. Jesus said, my words are spirit and they're alive. He told us, meditate in this book of law. Day and night. He said, attend unto my word. Incline your ears to my saying. Let it not depart from your eyes. Keep it in the midst of your heart. Then, you'll have life and health to all your flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what I'm telling you what too? We're during this COVID virus, we've been listening to what these fear mongers and talking heads saying on that TV, and we get to saying it about, oh, I'm not working, I'm busted, I'm flat broke, I'm sick. Well, you're gonna have what you say. Because you done turn it over. See, there's three sets of demons up there. Mm -hmm. There's a heavenly host, God's army, and there's demons up there. And they're going to act in the heavenlies either way. Either way is where they're going to act from. So we need to speak life and life abundant. Because he said we could. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But anyway, we're saying we're broke. Well, during that Passover, Psalms 150, 27 says, I'm telling you what, this is a time of wealth transfer. God said by Moses, his prophet, in Psalms 150, 27, and they went out with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble among them. Woo! Hallelujah! The blood, the name. What are you saying, people? Yes. I'm on my. Come on, Now. Yes, sir. I'm going to see if I can do this. The pastor Mank told me it worked. I shut my phone off. And I'm blind, but I'm going to get there in just a moment. So you guys hang with me because I'm. Oh, I tell you what, I believe I can. I can quote it by memory. But if you want to look in your Word at Proverbs 18:10, the name of the Lord is a high tower. Yes. The righteous run in and are safe. <laughs> the Amplified Bible says. It is an exceedingly high tower. 
and secure me from evil. Now we've been given that name. Come on. The 91st Psalms says a thousand may fall on our sides and ten thousand at our right hand, but it shall not come near us. We will only look on with our eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. For we have made the Lord our refuge, the Most High, that name above every name, our dwelling place. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then he goes on further to say, because you love me. Do you all tell the Lord you love him every day? That's it. Pastor brought this to my attention, or our attention, over a year or so ago. And I've really been making a point to do this. Lord, I love you with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. And I believe in the name of Jesus. And I love my neighbor as myself. I heard Joyce Meyer the other day when she, she was preaching on the on the parable of the sower. But she brought up two interesting things to me, but I got a third out of it also. But she says, listen. He who has an ear, let him hear. Well, in the seven churches in the book of Revelation, Jesus said, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. I'm telling you what, this is a prophetic word. This prophecy is a word of life. And that's what I'm speaking to you now. Life! 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 Come on, people! But in in this one particular translation I read, the modern English version, it says, listen and take note. The King James says, behold. But I like that. Take note. Now when y'all are listening to a message being preached, you don't have to write down the whole message like a scribe. But there's something that the man of God or woman of God says that will strike, you'll feel it in your spirit. Make a note of that so that you can go home with that, that you can research it through the Word of God and see what God is trying to say to you. Because God cares about you, 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 you and me, each one of us. Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly. Come on, people. Yes. Now, I know I preached on this a couple months ago, but you get to studying on something and you get to spending time with God and He starts giving you revelation. I'm going to Acts chapter 3. But I'll tell you what, you start getting that revelation. You know, we got that TV going and stuff. That TV. If you'll get along with, along with God and you start getting that revelation, you don't want to change the channel. Now, you can watch five years of Gunsmoke on TV, but I don't think old Matt Dillon's going to get you healed. <laughs> Amen? But that revelation knowledge, and he gets to speaking to you and speaking to you, and he's... He's given us this word and it's, it's more precious than silver and gold and we get to mining it and mining it and it's just, boy, it's just, he just keeps giving to you. He's an extravagant God. I'm telling you, he wants to build you up. He wants you rich. I'll tell you, God didn't send Jesus he didn't send his word to finance poverty. He sent it to eradicate it. Come on. Anyway, I'm in Acts chapter 3. If you, if you 
you want to follow along. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the ninth hour, the hour of prayer. You hear that? I want to draw that to your attention. The hour of prayer. Are you are we devoting ourselves? To that time? Mm -hmm. Now I'm telling you what, Peter and John didn't get that right off. If you go to the 14th chapter of Mark, in the Garden of Gethsemane, when Jesus is, he said, sit here and watch and pray. Well, I go over here and pray, and he's over there praying, and he comes back, and our, our buddy Peter, God love him, I sure do. I'll tell you what, Peter was a man of God. But he said, Peter, Simon, couldn't you watch and pray for an hour? Now I'm telling you what, John and Peter took that seriously. When the Lord speaks to you, you take that seriously. He's speaking to you and He has given you a direction because He wants you well. He wants you rich. He wants you strong. Amen. Oh. He wants these things for you. Yes, yes. Mm. Amen? Yeah. Okay, a man, lame from birth, was being carried, whom the people placed daily at the gate of the temple called Beautiful. to ask alms from those who entered the temple. Seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for alms. Peter, gazing at him, with John said, Look at us. So he paid attention to them, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, I have no silver and gold, but I give you what I have. Now this is something Peter had. Peter had. Peter had this. Amen. If you're a born again believer, you have got this. It's something you have. Yes. He says, but I give you what I have in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. Yeah. I want to go somewhere here. I'm going to go to 1 John 3. because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. And this is His commandment. Now if I ask most of you, what would you respond to me with? What is His commandment? Y'all love one another. But that's only part of the commandment. He says, this is His commandment that we should believe on the name of His Son, Jesus Christ. Come on. This is His commandment. This ain't a maybe. If we're going to walk the walk of faith, we got to believe in that name, that name that is above every name. Yes, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> well, now there's no greater gift that you could give somebody a greater act of love than to give them the gospel 
of Jesus Christ. Amen? Get them born again. And then what do we get? Then he says, those that believe in my name they shall cast out spirits. In my name they shall speak with new tongues. In my name they will handle serpents and drink anything poisonous and they shall not harm them. In my name they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In that name. In that name. I'll tell, I'm going to tell you what now. Those 11 apostles, that's all they had to preach. Was in that name. For 10 years. If you'll look through your, your Bible for at least 10 years, that's all they They preached the name of Jesus. They preached the death, the burial, and the resurrection, and the power that came from that. That's what they preached. They preached the name of Jesus. So church, we need to start using that name of Jesus and that blood and what He's given us to use. Amen? See, we, we get that for a person born again. And then what does He say in the 103rd Psalm? Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless your holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of His benefits. Woo! You forgive all my sins. You heal all my diseases. You redeem my life from destruction. What's trying to destroy you right now? You crown me with your loving kindness and tender mercies, and you satisfy my favorite dinner. My mouth with good things, so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. Hallelujah. In that name. In that name. Well, I'll see. We're walking way below. Pastor's got any other hand out right here. See, we need to put the devil under our feet. Get with that name. With that name, we need to pray. We need what the devil doing up there flying the friendly sky of the United. We need to put him in the dust where he belongs. Come on, people. My goodness. In my name. In my name. Pastor, Pastor May, she said, she said the first part of it last week, Romans 1, 16 and 17. I am not ashamed of the gospel. For the gospel is the power of God. The gospel is the power of God. Now I'll tell you what, then you get that gospel in the people and they start hearing this gospel message, that word of life. There's things that are going to start changing in this world. I'll tell you what, Satan's going to bow his knee. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's what he, he tells us in Ephesians 3, 14. For this cause I bow my knees unto all the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Now He's given us that name. That's your 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 name. He said to Peter, He said to Peter, He says, Who do you say that I am? I'm going to tell you about Peter. He's the only one of them apostles that got that Holy Ghost revelation right there through the gospel. He said, you are the son of the living God. He said, you did not, Jesus says to him, he says, you did not get that from man. That come from God. My, my, in that name. In that name. In that name. And he's been he's given us that name. He's been given us, he's given us the right to use us. Come on. He's given us the power of attorney. Yeah. 
But he will. He, it goes a little bit farther than that. He commanded us to believe in that name. Are you with me? Well, if this might be scaring some of them off. <laughs> but I tell you what, man. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go back to Acts chapter three there for a moment. But they say this man was laid there daily. Lame from birth. Well, now this right here is a bona fide miracle. I'm telling you what. This is a bona fide miracle. It's beyond a shadow of a doubt. and learn to walk. And they're going along walking and plank, plank. My goodness. They, but they're up again. Going along. Walking on and plop, bam. I'll tell you what, if we fell that many times in a day as a baby trying to learn to walk, we would be going, oh God, why me? Why me, Lord? But this, it says right here. Now, if you look over in the fourth chapter of this, this guy was 40 years old. Now, a kid learns faster than an adult. If you don't think so, take one up there to Mountain High on a set of snow skis. And I'll tell you what. That kid will be going down that mountain and he'll be coming back showing that adult because kids just learn quicker than adults. Because yeah, our religious teaching, see we get into this religious teaching, see you'll get on that set of skis there and you'll get saying, well i got to get this like this and i got to get this like that and i got to get this like that. Well I'm going to tell you, Jesus had been pre preaching at that temple just a few days before that. And he didn't receive his healing then. I'm going to show you something. If you look in the sixth chapter of Mark, he told those disciples to get in the boat and to go to the other side while he went up and prayed. Amen? He didn't tell them disciples to go out there and ground. But see, what we doing, we get to doing what he doesn't tell us to do, and then we get to wondering, why me? And it says, he would have passed them by. Because we quit looking at the solution. We quit saying what he says. We quit looking at that author and perfecter of our faith, and we start looking at that problem, and that's what it, there's one name right here that says, what's in a name? We start giving that name, we start giving that skin disease, or this cancer, or this fibromyalgia, or multiple sclerosis, we keep giving that name more power than the name of Jesus. See, what you keep saying is what's going to happen. You say, well, I've got this, and I've got that, and I've got this, and I've got that, and I've got this, and I've got that. Like I told you before, there's two sets of beings up there in that spiritual realm, and that's, you're going to have what's your confession. I know it 
says, you get a guy born again, and this is, and that command, he says, and this is my command, you believe in that name. Well, we go, well, I did that. I confess, I believe in my heart, and confess with my mouth, and make Jesus the Lord of my life. So I got, I got that off my checklist. No! That's just the beginning. That is just the beginning of it. See, we're supposed to be going out preaching that gospel to every creature. In my name. In my name. In my name. And he says these signs will follow them that believe. In my name.
2 9 says, Therefore God highly exalted him and gave him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth. What about Isaiah 9? He says, I have sent you a son, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace, Emmanuel. In the book of Revelations, he is called the Word of God. <laughs> my, my. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Just how high is that name? Look over here at Ephesians 1. Yeah, let me see. I'm just going to read the whole thing because I like, I like this. For this cause I make mention of you in my prayers, so that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him, that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of this cause. And that you would know the surpassing greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he performed in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him in his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above, high, far above, yes. far above all principalities, powers, might, dominion, and every name that is named in this age but also in that which is to come, and he put all things as objection under his feet and made him head over all the things for the church, which is his body and the fullness of him, who fills all things and in all things. And if you go to that second chapter, he says, and he raised us up together with him in Christ to sit in the heavenly places. That's why I say, why don't we let the devil fly the friendly sky that united for? Put him under your feet. Yes. Yeah. yeah, when you say to that, he said, in my name you shall cast out spirits, I'll tell you what, you're slamming wonderful, mighty God, Son, Prince of Peace, wonderful, Emmanuel, God with us, the Word of God, and I'll tell you what, that cancer, that lupus, whatever that disease is, it's going to bow its knee to the name of Jesus. Woo. Woo. Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. Glory he said it. That settles it. Yeah. So when you speak to that, whatever it is, plaguing you in the name of Jesus it's got to bow its knee. Are you hearing me? And I mean that. We're walking way below what He has given us. And we're in these last times. As the pastor says, this is, you're supposed to increase. We, us and our children. And we are blessed of the Lord. But we need to put increase some more time spent with Him. We are talking about that prayer, that hour of prayer. Well, that's a good start. But we go there and we inquire of the Lord and pray in the Spirit. That's what He tells us in, the, in, in Ephesians 6, praying with all manners of prayer. A lot of people, when they're preaching on the armor of God, they leave that out. I'll tell you what. When it says, put on the helmet of salvation, pick up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, it's not a period at the end of that sentence. It's a semicolon. Praying with all manners of prayer and supplication for all the saints. Yeah. 
But he wants a deal. He wants us a relationship with us. He wants a relationship with us. Psalm 23, 2 says, And he makes me to lie down in green pastures. Thank you, Lord, for this time that you've let me lay down and you have fed me and yeah. fed me yeah. and given me more and given me more that it's just I'll tell you what it's hard and I know Dr. Colerson knows this because we're evangelists yeah. and we go out there and we get pent up in these places and I'm not a social media giant or anything like this and I really don't like text messages too much I want to talk to somebody. I want to see their face. And I want to know that I know that I know that they're hearing me when I say it. And you know when a person is receiving. Don't you, doctor? You can see. Their countenance will change. Things happen. But I, I thank God for what we do have to reach out to everybody. Well, the name that is above every name, I just want you to encourage y'all to use that name. He said, take it, use it. But the Lord spoke to me here. I'm going to close it up here in a second. See, we're living, we're living far below all that He's given us. He, Jesus says, everything the Father has, has is mine. And I give it to you. show you something here. Psalm 103 20 says, and they, the angels, obey the voice of his word. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And I've loved, I've loved this verse. Right here in Luke 1, 38. Mary said, I am a servant of the Lord. May, be, may it be done unto me according to your word. And the angel departed. Okay, if you, if you all want to stand up in your house wherever, right now, and I'm going to, I'm going to go through it once, and then, then repeat it with me, because when you say this, you're going to be giving those angels something to work with. See, angels are messengers and they're warriors. And they can go out there and fight on your behalf. So, boy, I'm telling you what. I tell you what, now, you get a mad angel. If you look over there in 2 Kings, one mad angel killed 185,000 people. You think they ain't a powerful being and they can't get something done for us. Amen? Anyway, Psalms 107.20 says, he sent his word. Jesus named is the word of God. He sent his word 
and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Now I want you to say that with me. And then I want you to say, therefore, I no longer have whatever it is. I preached a message a while back, physician, heal yourself. So, so all you guys get on your stethoscopes and, and all that and get ready to go to work here. He sent his word and healed us and delivered us from our destruction. Therefore, I no longer have this spot in my eye because he sent his word and healed me and delivered me from my destruction. Now, Heavenly Father, I pray that all those listening would prosper and walk in health, even as their souls prosper. You said in your word by your servant David, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. So Heavenly Father, I'm declaring right now that we are going to walk in the wonderful way that you designed us to function. Because your word says it, we have it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen.